Welcome everyone. It's great to have you join us for the Reset series. My name is Colleen and I'll be hosting this week's session on studying scripture. As you know, as a church, we wanted to look at ways in which we can cultivate spiritual disciplines, which simply means practical ways in which we can grow as Christians. I'll be having two sets of conversations with members of our congregation today. And in between that, we'll hear from Simon Ponsonby as he speaks to us on reading scripture. Then after that, I'll give you a practice for you to work on this week. And then we'll have time together in small groups to discuss all that you've heard and also reflect on how you got on with the previous week's practice. We'll also give you a Bible study, which you can work through too. And if you're not in a small group, but you can still be involved, why not gather with a couple of friends and work through the series together? But let's first get started with our first conversation with Wangani and Finn. Hi, Wangani. Hi, Finn. Great to have you with us. So how are you reading the Bible at the moment? Uh, so I, at the moment, I go through like one long book. So like read one Psalm a day or a proverb, something like that. Um, and then I'd work through another book of the Bible at the same time. So I'd read a few chapters a day. Um, so then I'd probably go through the passage and I'd almost imagine I was going to lead a small group discussion or a talk on it. Mm -hmm. um, I'd think about what questions I'd ask other people and then I guess try and answer them myself. Um, and then if there's anything I'm not sure about, um, I'll try and look at the Greek or the Hebrew. So there's a website called Bible Hub. Um, if you look up Bible Hub, then the verse and then interlinear, it'll give you all the possible translations of a word because obviously not every Greek and Hebrew word translates literally to English. Mm. Um, so it's good to say, see the different ways that you can translate something and I guess how the Bible was originally written. Yeah, great. I think for me, I'm actually out of sync at the minute with um, my rhythms with um, reading the Bible. Last year I was trying to do a chronological um, New Living Translation was a printed version of the Bible in one year, um, but I didn't uh, complete it. Um, so my hope now this year is to do, uh, to look through Isaiah. And one of the ways I find it helpful to look at scripture is to um, some, print it out. So I printed it out a couple of years ago and this year I aim to go through the whole of Isaiah. Um, and I guess with the Bible reading, I love the fact that there's grace, I guess, that, that we don't need to earn our relationship with God by our daily Bible reading but he loves us no matter um, what we end up doing in our rhythms. Mm -hmm. But there's so many benefits to spending time with him. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I sometimes find it helpful to read other Christian books um, or get inspired by other Christian theologians um, to sort of kickstart uh, my rhythm as well. Mm. And what do you love about reading the Bible? Um, I guess for me, it's a bit like the story of the elephant and then the three blind men and they sort of all feel different parts of the elephant. Like one feels the leg and thinks it's a tree and one feels uh, the trunk and thinks it's a snake and one feels the tail, thinks it's like a broom or something. Um, and it's like without the Bible, we can experience different parts of God's character, but we need the Bible to be able to see the full picture, to open our eyes, um, to let us take a step back and um, get a new perspective on the whole of God rather than just small parts of him. Mm, that's a really helpful picture. And I think it's similar for me as well, just seeing, yeah, that God is at work through the whole scripture from Genesis to Revelation, mm -hmm. but then also how each part of scripture, each time you re look at it again, mm -hmm. you almost see something new of God and his character and his purpose as well. And I find that really encouraging. Um, yeah, and I think it's just, yeah, amazing that scripture has something to say to us each time that we read to it as well. Yeah. Do you ever struggle with certain parts of the Bible? Definitely. Um, so uh, a while ago I was struggling with 1 Corinthians chapter 11 um, which talks about women having to wear head coverings um, and I struggled with that for a while um, and I also sometimes struggle with visions which um, especially in the later parts of the Bible and Revelation um, they often seem weird and I can't really understand what they mean um, yeah yeah and I think similar for me with Revelation there's so many visions that I just don't yeah. really understand and then also um, in the Old Testament thinking about um, the Israelites when they're going into the promised land mm -hmm. and the fact that they have to sort of conquer these lands and this genocide and that's sort of linked to I guess just that's been used to justify genocide and also religious wars in the past and colonialism and other many difficult uh, topics that I just can't get my head around. And I guess sometimes I actually find it helpful when I am stuck um, to read um, different um, 
books and um, even some, I've been thinking about different theologians who like ethnic minority uh, theologians or even female um, theologians who maybe we don't generally as, engage as much with mm -hmm. to explore some of these more tricky topics and seeing different points of yeah. views as well. Yeah, um, the thing you said about reading other books, um, I really related with because um, about a year ago, we were discussing in small group, um, we'd just gone through a part of Genesis and we were talking about the laws of the Old Testament and why they don't, um, not all of them apply to us now. Mm. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, I read um, Galatians, I think it was chapter one or two or something. Um, and it talked exactly about that passage. And um, yeah, it was really cool to see how the, obviously the two parts of the Bible were linked and mm. how, yeah, reading another book can sort of solve the, the dilemma you're having. Yeah. And I, and I guess, yeah, ultimately, sometimes we may never really come to a full conclusion or understanding of things, but um, I think it's still important to explore. And it's just trusting that it's God's word, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, thank you so, so much for sharing that today. It's always helpful to hear both the, the challenges, but also the joys of reading the Bible. Thank you both. Now we're going to hear from Simon as he speaks to us on reading scripture. So why not grab your Bible and a notepad? Eugene Peterson, the well-known and much-loved writer and pastor who gave us the message translation of the Bible, he wrote these words. The Christian scriptures are the primary text for Christian spirituality, for faith and practice. Christian spirituality is, in its entirety, rooted in and shaped by the scriptural text. And what he was saying was this, that if we're to live the Christian life and do the Christian stuff and be Christian people, then we need to be formed and fashioned and living in and living out from scripture. On many occasions when Jesus met individuals, he asked them this question, have you not read in the scriptures? They would come to him with various questions, probing him about different things. And often his answer was, haven't you read in the scriptures? Because there in the scriptures is the answer to what you want to know about God and to how you are to live with God. And Jesus himself, of course, read the scriptures. His whole life was framed by the Old Testament. God, through Moses, instructed that all Jewish men wrote portions of the scripture that were contained in a little leather box on leather thongs, and they wrapped them around their arms, and they wrapped them around their forehead. They were called tephilim, or phylacteries, that means protection. And they did it because God instructed that the people of Israel would have his word, his scriptures, near to them. And so they wrapped them around their arms. You may have seen Orthodox Jews today pray in this way, around their arms so that God's word was directing what they did. And it was placed here so that it was nearest their heart, how they felt. And then they would wrap it around their forehead. And there, in a box on their forehead, was a scripture in between their eyes, directing what they saw and controlling their mind. And Jesus would have worn these. His life framed and ordered, his thinking and acting by God's word, like all Orthodox Jewish people. And they were to wear a, a fringe or tassels on the fringe of their garments on the four corners. And again, God said, do this so that wherever they went, God's word would be framing and going before them. Jesus read the scriptures. Jesus was the eternal word of God. Orthodox Jewish brought up studying God's law. And everything he did was framed by it. Interesting to note that he quoted the Old Testament directly over three dozen times and quoted from 24 Old Testament books. Jesus saw himself as the interpreter and the fulfillment 
of the Old Testament. No understanding of Jesus. There can be no understanding of Jesus without an understanding of scriptures. And when Jesus was tempted and tested by the devil, he resisted the devil by quoting scripture. And in one of the temptations, he said this, humans shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And this is Jesus's understanding of the Old Testament scripture. These are the very words of God coming from the mouth of God that are the food for our living. It's interesting that Jesus's earthly ministry began with him in a synagogue opening the scroll and reading it. And towards the end of his ministry, he taught the disciples after the resurrection from the scriptures, showing himself in them. And the disciples said, did not our hearts burn within us when he opened up those scriptures to us? Jesus says, have you not read in the scriptures? And if we're to know him, if we're to be his disciples, to be disciplined and discipled and trained by him, we need to be people of the book, even as he himself was. Often, though, we can feel intimidated by the Bible. We're put off by its size and the distance between it and ourselves, the writers, historically and uh, linguistically and conceptually and culturally. And we just don't know how to get in and we don't know how to handle God's word, the, the Bible. And I just want to suggest briefly just a few things to help us in handling the Bible, in reading it and learning from it and tasting it and growing through it. And the first is this, that we need to read the Bible prayerfully. Prayerfully. Every day, I want to encourage you, every day, even if just for five minutes, open the Bible and ask God to speak to you. Don't open it and just tuck in. Open it and say, God, please speak to me. We speak to God in prayer and God normatively speaks to us in reading the Bible. It is his word to us and for us. Reading the Bible is a conversation with God. And when you read something that confuses you or surprises you or provokes you or challenges you or encourages you. Turn that back into prayer. Be reading it prayerfully. And then when you've finished, again, think on what you've read and turn it to prayer. Even if it's just for five minutes, try and get into the habit of opening your Bible and having a conversation with God and meeting him there. That's the first thing. Read it prayerfully. And then secondly, I want to encourage you to read it consistently. Don't be a dipper. Don't dip into it. Read it consistently and even consecutively. We're the disciples of Jesus. That means we're dis disciplined by him. We're trained by him. And this is the manual for our training. So don't read it randomly. Don't just open it up at random and read some passage. You might like to start reading it from the start. Start at the start. Begin at the beginning and go through to the end. The Bible is a collection of many books, but they have been ordered in a certain way, often gathered around themes and genre and types of literature, but there is a beginning and there is an end. The Bible starts with Genesis. That means the start or the beginnings. It's the beginnings of creation. 
the beginnings of God's interaction with humankind and a particular call to a particular person, Abraham, through whom he will bring a particular people, the people of Israel, and to them he will reveal himself and through them he will give himself to the world. And so as we read this story of God's interaction with them, we learn principles and precepts. We understand the nature of God and he speaks to us from them there to us here now. The other literature, as I said, is grouped in genre, whether it's the laws to obey or rules for worship or wisdom for life or songs to sing or prophets to challenge or encourage. That's the Old Testament. And then we get to the New Testament and it starts with the four Gospels, the story of Jesus, who he was, what he did, his teaching, his life, his instruction, his revelation of himself. And then we have the book of Acts, the story of the church. And then we have all the letters from the apostles, letters to the church or leaders in the church. And finally, we have the book of Revelation, which is the end, how God will bring all of history to its climax and consummation and then open up eternity. So we can read it from beginning and we can read it to the end. It's important we understand, though, what it is we're reading. I want to encourage you to read it consistently, a little every day, perhaps consecutively. Why not start at the beginning? Go to the end and return, let me say, return to the Gospels regularly. I read the Bible from beginning to end all the time. But often in that journey from beginning to end, I do go to the Gospels because I want to stay close to Jesus. Never tire of reading them. And then thirdly, read it contextually. You've got to read the text in its own context, its own understanding and literary and historical setting. And the Bible, well, it's bound as one book, but really it's a mini library. There's 66 books, actually, 39 in what's called the Old Testament before Jesus came, and then 27 in the New Testament after Jesus came, written by over 40 different authors over a period of 1,500 years. And the authors are as diverse as fishermen to kings to lawmakers, from peasants to scholars. And it has a whole range of genre, not all the same. There's history and there's law and there's poetry and there's biography and there's songs and there's prophecy and there's personal letters. And we Got to understand what we're reading because that affects how we read and how we respond. And yet all these different writings from different people at different times in different contexts are all seen to cohere. It's the same God who breathed them, who spoke them into being, who inspired the writers, who inspired them being written and being sent, and being received, and being treasured, and being collected, and being collated, and finally being closed in what we call the canon, or the rule. The whole of the Old Testament is looking forward expectantly to Jesus coming. It's about anticipation. And the whole of the New Testament is a recollection and a response to the coming of Jesus. I find that helpful as I'm reading it. One is looking forward to laying the groundwork for, and then the other is looking back to. Can I encourage you to perhaps use some aids in your reading? I often recommend the ESV Study Bible, English Standard Version Study Bible. It's available online, available as an app. I recommend you buy a a, a paper copy and carry it with you. And there, there are guides and introductions to the books and a running commentary explaining what you're reading and ability to cross-reference and essays. It's a great resource to get into the Bible. 
Then, of course, there's the Bible app. You can download on your phone. That'll help you. And there's something online, a website I recommend called Bible for Life. These are really good resources to help you read the Bible comprehensively and contextually. And then fourthly, read it Christologically, the religious word. But what it means is with Jesus at the center. Jesus is the big story of the Bible. I've already said the Old Testament anticipates. The New Testament is a recollection and a celebration and a response to the coming of Jesus. In John 5, 39, Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, you read these scriptures, he says, but they testify to me. It's been suggested that over 350 Old Testament prophecies and um, allusions were fulfilled in the life of Jesus. He's the big story. It's all about him. So when you're reading scripture and you're praying and asking God to speak to you and you're trying to read it in its own setting and context and culture to understand the nature of the literature that you're reading and what it was trying to say to those who initially received it, all the while you're also saying, where is Jesus here? And if you look, you will find him. If the Bible was a jigsaw puzzle, 1,189 pieces, say, for each chapter, each little piece would be different with a different shape and different edge and different part of the picture. But when fitted together, all of them present our wonderful Jesus. The Bible is an invitation from Jesus. Come and meet me here. Meet me here. And then finally, read the Bible personally. Read it existentially. Addressing you as an individual. Yes, it is addressed to different people at a different time in a different place than you are. And yet the God who was speaking to them then there through that is speaking to you right here and now. Read it personally. I came across one Chinese reader with no Christian convictions or experience beforehand who was given a Bible, and this was his response, quote, whoever made this book made me, and it knows all my heart. And somehow as we read this book, this book of books, this book that contains lots of little books, as we read this book, it addresses us. The Holy Spirit who inspired those prophets then and inspired the church and the writers of Scripture and, the, and inspired the collecting, the collating, the treasuring and the transmission to us all the way down through the centuries into our modern language and idiom. He's still speaking through it to us personally. And he tailor fits this word to us. I love what the Danish philosopher Kierkegaard said. When you read God's word, he says, you must be constantly saying to yourself, he's talking to me and it's about me. I've read hundreds of books, but the Bible's the only book that reads me. It knows all about me and through it I meet with God. We're not simply to read it in its historical setting, um, trying to have a history lesson or read its literature and have a kind of English literary um, study. We're trying to meet with God. And through the different times and the different genre written at different periods, God is speaking to us. He's speaking to us and he's revealing himself to us in Jesus and meeting with us. What an amazing thing! One of my favorite descriptions of the Bible was by the novelist Jeanette Winterstone, and she said, It is lovers' talk and whispers in the ear and public truth. And she's right, it's all those things. It's lovers' talk. It's God who loves us, wanting to speak to us. 
and whispers in the ear. Sometimes it's not loud and it's certainly never shrill. Sometimes you've got to, it's whisper and you've got to attune to that still small voice of God. And yet what is told is true and it is truth for the world. Jesus asks often, have you not read in the scriptures? He wasn't criticizing them. It's not like saying to your children, have you cleaned your teeth yet before they go to bed? No, he is offering an invitation and an encouragement to come and have an encounter and an adventure with God. Years ago, I knew a preacher who used to preach on the streets and he would put a Bible under his jacket and he would stand there just looking at it. And a crowd would gather as he was sort of acting. And they'd look at him and they'd look at the floor and they'd wonder what was going on. And they'd see this jacket and he'd shout, it's alive, it's alive. And they'd stand like this and then he'd take off the jacket and pick up the Bible. It's alive, it's alive. And through it, we come alive as we meet God. Thanks so much, Simon. Before we mull over what Simon shared, we're joined by Stephen and Fiona. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Fiona. Great Hello. to have you with us. How are you reading the Bible at the moment? I use um, an app called Read Scripture, which has got illustrations from the Bible project on it, which um, goes through each book of the Bible and, and each um, sort of chronological moment of the Bible and gives you certain passages to read every day, which then amounts to being a Bible in a year. Um, but I quite like that it actually gives you a lot of the background information because I've never been very good at piecing the whole Bible together. So <laughs> me too. that helps me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, so I, um, th there are different ways that I personally engage with scripture. Um, one of them is in reading. And for that, I use a uh, uh, Bible reading plan developed by a Scottish preacher years ago named Robert Murray McShane. Um, read through the whole Bible, uh, four chapters a day in a year or two chapters a day in two years. So when I'm reading, that's what I'll use. Um, equally, I have a great study Bible, so I love to engage with sort of uh, Bible maps or chronologies, as he says, or comments, you know, commentary on the text, wherever we are, whether it's in the biographies of Jesus or the Old Testament, etc. I think the older I get, the more um, I really enjoy spending time sort of camping out and meditating, meditating on the text. And what do you love about the Bible? I love about, about the Bible that it's, um, uh, it's full of real characters. It's full mm. of people who screw up the whole time. Generations are screw up. Uh, it's full of history. It's full of poetry. Um, yeah, and that it's, it's one whole story as well. Um, I like that it really centers me if I'm feeling something or I'm, uh, if you're going through a really rocky situation, you come to the Bible and it's firm and it's solid and it's true mm -hmm. and it, you can bring your feelings to it, but then what you get back is something far more certain. You get God's word. And that, I think, makes you a lot less shakable in life. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I, I love about the Bible that um, it sort of has a cumulative effect, you know. Um, the whole Isaiah 55, 11, my word, which goes forth from my mouth, doesn't return void. It serves every purpose, and I think you know, whether you're looking for guidance or encouragement or comfort. Um, the scripture you read today may not be for today. Mm. It may be for next week. It may be for the week after or the year after. It may be for you. It may be for someone else in your life that God brings you to either in the faith or outside the faith who needs that at that time. It has this... Um, as I say, this cumulative effect, God is constantly building you up. We, we talk about, um, Lord, give us more faith. And yet faith comes by hearing and hearing 
by the word of God, brick by brick, verse by verse. He's, mm. he's building us up. I know I've experienced that. Great. So you talked about it being grounding, but also strengthening and building us up. Mm. Well, you're both parents. Mm. How do you read the Bible to the kids? Um, in a variety of ways. Um, we, when they were really little, um, we had really little baby Bible stories and things, um, and then um, progressed uh, largely through the Jesus storybook Bible, which cool. we love and they love, and um, and now far more the actual Bible. They mm. we occasionally do do family um, Bible studies. Stephen has this great big whiteboard and really goes through it. They've all got their Bible notebooks really and their highlighter pens and they go for it. But even when they were really little, we had um, we had a sort of uh, quite cheesy um, CD of Bible verses in the car by a guy called Steve Green, who's American. And then we had like the more like rock version for kids from an Australian mm -hmm. guy called Colin Buchanan. But either way, they're like totally, it's totally bearable music to listen to as an adult. And the kids loved it, and they mm. just sit there singing about the fruits of the spirit. And you think, oh, good, well, that's that traffic jam mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the next step. But they've they've always been exposed to it a little bit every day, mm. um, and some days more than others. And and we also, um, I mean, there's five of us. And when we're in the car, everybody gets a choice about what we listen to, and when it's mm. our choice, it's quite often a sermon, not aimed at children. They've just got. To so yeah. they would listen to it but they they do absorb it and they do often ask questions so um we've come at it from a lot of different angles yeah it's true for kids it's true in life you oftentimes you rise to the height of the expectations set on you you know and for, and as kids yeah everybody gets a choice and if mom and dad's choice is a sermon or a short talk or you know something like that something from the bible project then you know then they can learn to to bear up, I think with me and um, more often than not, Fee will put our daughter to bed. I will put our boys to bed and our boys share a room. Not, I've, I've never, I never took the approach of like going through the motions. Like if we're going to read the Bible together, we're just going to read this. Mm -hmm. It's always been quite discursive. You know, so right now we're going through the book of Acts and it's asking them questions like when, um, when Saul is on the road to Damascus and Jesus says to Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Mm -hmm. Asking them, what does he mean? What does God mean there? Mm -hmm. You know, what does Jesus mean there talking to Saul? And it's fascinating sometimes the things your kids will, mm -hmm. will say. Sometimes you find yourself being taught by them. Yeah. And mm -hmm. a little, little and often. Little and often, mm -hmm. that's right. Because when they're really little, that's all any of you can manage. So. yeah well thank you so much that was really helpful and really practical as well so thank you for sharing welcome well as i mentioned earlier each week we're working on a new practice and this week we want to encourage you to each day read a chapter of um, ephesians and before you read just take a moment to ask god what is it he might be saying to you and pray that he would speak to you through the scriptures by his Holy Spirit. And after you've read the passage, we want you to just then ask three questions. Is there a promise for me to enjoy? Is there a practice for me to do? And is there a prayer for me to ask? So three Ps, promise, prayer and practice. And we look forward to hearing how you get on with that. Well, we're coming to the end of our session. It's been a real joy to be with you. Um, and we're praying for you in this week ahead. See you next week.